What's up guys, it's Dr. Doodle again. In this video, I'll show you how to create a illustration of the coronavirus, because why not capitalize on this moment? Let's go. All right, so as usual, let's start by creating an A4 size document. And the first thing we will draw for this virus is the typical capsid. So let's go ahead and draw a circle just like this with the ellipse tool. And I've created some swatches that I want to use for this illustration. Select the stroke, and because it's a virus, I'm, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. Something like that. And I'm gonna adjust the stroke to go on the edge of the illustration like that. And you can do that by going to the window panel and going to stroke, and they'll, it will show you options like this. Now let's color this properly. I want it to, I want the stroke to be like this color right here. So let's go and select this color, activate it, go to swatches and just drag it down here so you can have it handy. Now select the lips, select the stroke, go to swatches and click again. Now it's looking like something like that. So the inside of the virus, let's give it a little gradient so it looks better. Let's go to the, uh, to the window panel and find gradient. Click there. So let's activate the color that we want to use for gradient, which is the fill. And let's select radial gradient. By default, Illustrator is going to give you a black and white. So then you have to select the, the colors that you want to use. In this case, I want to use this top two. So as before, let's select this one, drag it down so we have it in the swatches. Same for the... So now let's select this one and you simply just need to gra grab those colors and gra drag them into the gradient tool. Let's erase this one right here. So that's it for the circular part of it. Now I'm going to go and draw the spike proteins, which are what gives it the name Corona. I'm gonna use the pen tool for this one. Let's zoom in a little bit. They have a shape like a, I don't know, like a rounded T. So I'm gonna go and just draw something like this. If you don't like the output of what you're doing, because it's safe after your uh, last um, modification, just use the, the mouse and go to into the tools and reduce the stroke or remove it all together. You can also do the same to remove the fill and just stay with the with what you're drawing. Let's create just half of it and then just mirror it. Something like like this. Press escape to release the pen tool. Now let's use the anchor point tool and soften these edges right here. Let's select this one, right click, transform, reflect. I want a copy of a vertical reflection. So let's click copy and select this one and move it so we can just overlap it. Something like that, it will be all right. Perhaps it's too broad for what we want. So we can select them both and shrink them a little bit, maybe a little bit just like that and that is looking all right. So I need to join these two. So I'm gonna go to use my direct selection tool, grab these two anchor points and just go and, and hit command J for command join. Or you can do the same by selecting the anchor points and right click join. And that's it. Now I need to work on these edges, so I'm gonna select my anchor point tool and just do the same. So there we have it, our spike protein, and it's looking something like this. I want to color this spike in a, this bright yellow, so I'm gonna select this figure, select the eyedropper tool, which is right here, and just click on the shape that has the color that I want. And yeah, it's looking like that. I also wanted to have a little highlight on the top just to give it another look. And I'm gonna draw it with the pencil tool. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's 
looking something like that. And because it's shine from a yellow color, I'm gonna give it a lighter yellow color. Same for uh, for this one right here. I'm gonna click the eyedropper tool and go with that. No, ed no stroke for this because it's just a highlight. So now that I have that one, let's place it in place. I'm gonna group these two so I don't have any problems of moving one and not the other. So select everything and right click and group. You can also do that by pressing Command G. So that's looking probably a little bit smaller in size that I want. So let's go and drag this, this corner by pressing and pressing shift on your keyboard. And that's good. That's going to be a proportional scale up. And perhaps just a tiny bit more. That's looking all right. So let's select this one. Command C to copy. Shift Command V to paste in place. As you can see, if I move this, I have an exact same copy on the very same place. So I'm just going to use my key shift and the keypad on my keyboard to bring it down somewhere around there. And let's rotate it 180 degrees. Group them, select them, and also select the circle. And once you have these three together, click on the circle again, and it's going to highlight like that. And now this is what Illustrator knows as a key object. So you then go to Window, Align, and we're gonna distribute these two shapes, the yellows, in respect to this key object. So let's click Align in, in the center and also Vertical Align. And as you can see, they moved a little bit and now they are exactly the same distance from the center of this circle. Let's select, select them again. Command C to copy, Shift Command V to paste in place, and let's rotate while holding the Shift key 45 degrees. Now we have a copy. We're gonna do the same thing. Command C, Shift Command V, and rotate by pre and also pressing Shift. Same again. Command C, Shift Command V, press Shift and rotate. And there we have it. Uh, the next step is just the same and just to fill the gaps here. So I'm gonna speed up the video for. And there we have it. The spike proteins are done. Let's now draw the proteins that are sitting on the outside and in between the spikes. So for that, I'm gonna use the rounded rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw one just like this. Uh, perhaps that's, that's enough. And I like the round edges, but not that much. So let's zoom in a little bit until I can see these white dots right here. Just use the selection tool and click and drag. You can either make it really round and it will show you that the red is the, the farthest you can go, or you can go back and make it more square. I like something around there. I am also gonna draw a highlight on this one. And first, let's just um, change the color. I want these to be lighter in yellow, so I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool to select this color right here. And there we have it. The highlight, it's going to be very minor, but I'm gonna do it with my pencil tool as before. Because I don't like these really pointy edges right here. I'm gonna select this part and then just go to stroke and select a round cap and a round corner. And it's looking a little bit better. This highlight a little bit clearer than that yellow. So eyedropper tool and select the other color. As you can see, it works a lot if you identify the colors that you want to use in your illustration and have them handy in your document so you can just click there and get those colors. Also, get them under swatches panel. Sometimes if you lose them and you want to match those colors, it can be a little bit tricky. Get this to you, Command G to group, and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit to, um, to give it the right perspective. Since it's sitting on the edge and it's too per slot. Let's create another copy of it. You can do this by doing Command C or in Command V. It, it, Illustrator will put it anywhere in the document. Or you can select it, press the Option key, and just drag. 
get the perspective right. It doesn't have to be extremely accurate. That's looking all right. So I'm gonna uh, copy and paste them the same way I did with the spike proteins by clicking on them. These two I'm gonna group. I'm gonna press Command C, Shift, Command V to paste them in place. And I'm gonna rotate them 180 degrees. And now it's just a matter of dragging them into place to create the first pair. Now that they are together, I'm gonna go ahead and select the opposite side, Command C, Shift, Command V, and now I can start rotating as before. And there we have it. Now we have the, both of the outside proteins done. Maybe just to wrap it up, I am going to draw the, in, the content of the virus. In this case, we know it's an RNA virus, um, single strand. So before I've created RNA sequence that looked like this, so I can show you in another video how to draw this. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and copy it, paste it right here. And what I'm actually going to do is create a pattern brush with this sequence, because if I want it to look like it's coiled inside the virus, having this rigid object might not be the best option to do it. So what I'm going to do is select this one and group it, right click and group. And I'm going to bring up my brushes uh, menu right here. So I'm going to select this one, go here on the plus sign, new brush, new pattern brush, and click OK. As you can see, it has taken it horizontally. So it's going to make repetitions of a vertical RNA strand. So that's not what I want. Let's go and click cancel and rotate this 45 degrees. Something like that. Now just go and select new pattern brush and hit OK. As you can see now, it has gotten um, correctly the orientation of the drawing. Let's click OK. Now we have a new brush. And the way these brushes work is you can either use the paintbrush tool or the pencil tool to draw a line and then apply this brush. So let's go and click on the pencil tool and just go crazy. Now that you've drawn your sequence, go back to your direct selection tool and just click on the pattern brush that we just created. And it's looking like that. If you want to match the look to these proteins that we've drawn here with a, a black outline, select these, go to object and click expand appearance. Now, as you can see, instead of having that drawn stroke, we have an actual solid object. So let's just go back, select the RNA and activate the stroke and click black. That might be a little bit too big. So let's just go back to 0.25 points. And now it's looking like this. And that's pretty much it. Let's just reduce this so, so we can have a clear view, take it out of the way. That's a very rough and quick sketch of the novel coronavirus. If you have a presentation or if you want to put it in, in a figure or in a paper, that's a really quick way of just getting a quality image that is yours and that it's up to you to distribute. I hope you like this short video and yeah, just keep producing uh, good illustrations and I'll see you in the next one.